Hey guys, here we go into a interesting video. We're going to look at um, all the punches that landed in the 12th round between Golovkin and Canelo. Um, but first we're going to look at some of the missed punches um, that were close, that I don't, I'm not scoring. And then we're going to look at all the scoring punches. And I want you guys to tell me at the end of it uh, which fighter you would rather be uh, in the 12th round. Um, and uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say anything. Uh, I'll, I'll give my opinions and my ideas about it after. But I, let's go ahead and get into the clips. So these are the punches. Oh, and my camera is not here because the clips are like kind of blurry. So I just want it to be um, the punches. So as you can see, the first one, the jab misses. The right hand misses. These are all the missed punches that that may have been scored that may affect it. Just in case people are saying I'm being biased and I'm not. Uh, showing everything. This right hand misses uh, from Canelo. He sticks his right hand out and then he throws a uh, right hand um, to over his jab. He slips that punch. This punch misses. See it's blocked by Golovkin here. Blocked by Golovkin here. And then miss. And then miss. Uh, both those shots miss. Does that last one land though? I don't know. Let's see. But as you can see, that one goes right over his head. Um, that one actually looks like it might... No, it doesn't look... It doesn't land. Um, it looks like it's coming after him on the way out. And it misses. Um, it might be like a grazing shot. I'm not sure. Misses the right hand right there. Misses the left hook right there. Misses the body shot. Uh, and then he goes down. Um, Golovkin missing. I'm not counting that right hand right there, even though it's like, you know, kind of whatever, but it's on the side of the glove. Not a really landing blow. Not really landing, not really landing, not really landing, not really landing. Um, that jab might land from Canelo, but I was highlighting the punches that Golovkin missed there. But I don't think the jab lands. Let's watch it one more time. Yeah, I'm not sure if it lands. It might touch him, but, um, miss that right hand, misses that left hook. And then you can see this one's kind of cuffing. Um, it doesn't land with the um, with the glove. It's kind of hitting him with the forearm, so it's not a punch. Uh, that right hand definitely lands from Golovkin, but it's not like a real punch either. You're kind of tying up inside fighting. Um, but now let's get to the punches that you should definitely be scoring, and let's kind of watch. We're gonna watch Golovkin's, or we're gonna watch Canelo's first. So he lands a jab right there. He lands a jab right there. He lands a jab to the chest right there. Not that punch. That body shot, you score that one. Uh, you don't score the first punch. Whoops. You don't score this one. It doesn't land. He gets on the inside of it. But you score this body punch. Not a hard punch. Um, you score that jab from Golovkin, but we won't talk about that right now. All these punches miss. That one's blocked. That one misses. Um, Golovkin and Canelo's left hooks both miss right there. I watch it like 30 times. Um, but Canelo lands a great right hand right here. Right there off of Golovkin's jab. Um, right? It's so hard to even time it too, but he lands a great right hand right there. And then all the rest of those punches miss, miss, miss. Um, and then he shoots that and he comes up with this uppercut right there. Great uppercut. Great couple combination right there. Great combination. Uh, let's just look at those again. So it's like one, two, three. Three punches from him. Miss. And then he lands that uppercut to the... Oh, so he lands... Um, this, it looks like the body shot there, maybe, he lands a body shot there, lands that left hook and misses the right hand, kind of touches him with the right hook right there, touches him with the right hook there, body shot is blocked, and then all those uh, rest of the punches miss, catches him with the two piece here, right, the left hook, boom, boom, and then the right hand misses, just falls short, and those are all the punches that Canelo lands in the 12th round. Now, these are the punches that Golovkin landed. Great uh, left hook right there. You can see it almost turn uh, Canelo's head around. Great jabs right there, knocking Canelo's head around. A great uppercut right there. Great jab right there. Great right hand right there. Boom, great right hand. Canelo catches him, it looks like, with a combination after. Great uppercut right there. Great right hand right there. Great uppercut and then jab. And then this last punch right here, the uppercut. Um, now, the interesting thing is, is 
when you look at all these punches, um, and I'm just going to play Canelo's again, and you can watch them while I'm talking. Um, there's so much more ambiguity between the punches that land for Canelo. Um, and the way that you should be scoring this is whose punches do you think are more effective? You know, uh, that was a good right hand right there, but how many of these punches look like they're really affecting Golovkin? Look at this beautiful uppercut. No effect on Golovkin. No power on it. He doesn't even barely turns his head a little bit, and Golovkin's walking right into it. You know, Canelo, Golovkin's walking right through all these shots, right? And, um, you know, even though I think Max Kellerman does a disservice to, to like, a, for a lot of boxing commentary, um, one of the most important things that he, uh, that I have ever heard him say is that at the end of the round, you want to talk about who you want, who you would rather be, you know, and look at how the, look at the effectiveness of Golovkin's shots in the 12th round. How many shots did Canelo land in the 12th round that did this to his opponent, you know? Or look at his head when he knocks him back with that jab. And people are saying jabs don't count. But look at that jab. How many of Canelo's right hands did that to Golovkin? You know, so who would you rather be uh, at the end of the round, Golovkin or Canelo? Um, again, look at these these this great combination right here. Boom, turns his head around. Almost, you know, definitely staggers him. You know, you can see his... Um, you can see him fall off balance. Boom. Um, great shots from, from Golovkin. So even if Canelo outlands him, right, even if that's the case, and I don't know if it's true or not, I should have brought up the CompuBox stats or whatever, um, or even just counted the punches in my own goddamn video. But um, even if you look at that, you know, who would you rather be in the 12th round? You know, who? which one of these guys would you rather be? Like, you know, just looking at, again, looking at the punches that Canelo lands, are they affecting Golovkin? You know, I know a lot of people were making a lot of big deals about the body shots. Oh, he killed him with the body shots. Canelo definitely landed more body shots. But did they affect Triple G? Did he knock Triple G down? Um, how can you say that that was a better shot, this one right here, than anything that Canelo or that Golovkin landed in the round? Um, but anyway, um, it's interesting, too, because um, when I watched the fight originally, I saw that Golovkin landed the better shots in the round, but I actually still gave the round to um, to Canelo, uh, which I know that's mind-boggling, right? But if, especially when you look back at it and you're like, oh, shit, Golovkin landed way better. Like, look at that jab. You know, how many punches in this round did Canelo land that did that to his head, right? Boom, boom, double jab, triple jab there, pop, pop. You know, that one gets caught. But um, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, let me know at the end of the 12th round, um, in for the 12th round, who you think you would rather have been um, scoring the round like that, you know. Um, oh, and also, you know, I know that people are going to say um, – Damn it. And you know what? The people who are going to say this, they're not going to be the ones that finished the video before they commented. But um, um, clean, effective punching is the scoring criteria. Everything else is secondary. Uh, ring generalship, defense. Um, uh, I'm blanking on the other one. <laughs> but, um, but everything else is secondary to punches. It, you don't score those. You don't say, oh, he was the ring generalship in spite of the fact that he or he had the ring generalship um, in spite of the fact that he got outlanded 30 to 1, but he was the ring general. He had better defense and whatever. You can't win a round like that. You always score it by clean, effective punching. Oh, aggression, effective aggression, right? And if if each fighter lands 20 punches and the round is basically even, you score it for the fighter who's coming forward. You know, the one that's putting themselves out of position, taking the, taking the, the more risk to make offense on their opponent. Because if you, if you both land 20 punches and you're the one coming forward, accepting the amount of risk for being the one coming forward, then, then technically you did better than your opponent because you came to him, right? 
you were the one putting yourself out of position. Um, um, and then, you know, you look at, but also then you have to look at ring generalship as an effective aggression. Um, if the other person is the ring general, you know, um, did glove can ever wind up on the ropes, you know, um, was Canelo ever able to put him there? No. So you can't say that Canelo was the ring general because he was following Golovkin around. He was putting the pressure on, effective aggression, but but Golovkin was the one leading the leading the fight in terms of where the fight was going to be fought, when they were going to fight, and when they were going to engage. Um, and that's like one of the differences between like effective aggression and being the ring general is that the ring general is the one that says when you fight. He's the one that says, oh, we're going to fight now. We're going to fight here. We're going to, you know, whereas if you're being the effective aggressor, you're the one making your opponent fight when they don't want to. Um, and then <clears throat> defense, like everyone knows what defense is. To be honest, I don't know how the fuck you score defense, you know, like, do you give a point to somebody? The same point, like if, if you punch me in the face with a right hand, bah, and then you throw the same right hand and I slip it, do I get an equal amount of points as you got for me, for you landing that punch as me slipping it? Like, is that? No, that's stupid. Um, so I think that that's kind of a flawed and outdated idea of scoring. But um, um, but the reason that you take things into, into consideration, like effective aggression um, and ring generalship are because of the fact that there's an understanding that the guy going forward usually starts the fight out with less control over their opponent. Um, they're the ones putting themselves out of position going forward. So in the even rounds, um, you would give it to the effective aggressor, um, but they have to be able to maintain um, the ability to score with their opponent equally. Um, and in this 12th round, in my opinion, I don't think that Canelo scores equally with Golovkin. Um, I think he probably lands more punches, um, but his punches do not have the same effect. He's not landing the hard shots um, that Golovkin is, is landing. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, thanks for keeping it civil in the comments, too. I appreciate that. Um, um, the last couple... Uh, days have been really good for the comments even though I haven't been replying I've just been really busy a lot going on and stuff but um anyway let me know what you guys think don't forget to like comment and subscribe and uh yeah